everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kenning. I'm Joey Evans. Today we're taking a look at Robot Quest Arena. And whatever else I might say about this game, I, for the life of me, cannot remember the name of it. No, it's I tough. just keep calling it that robot game. Yep. Um, uh, like that 70s show. It just feels like a generic name, but eh, it's minor. Uh, this is from Wise Wizard Games, probably best known for, I should say probably, they are best known for Star Realms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is deck building, but with robots fighting each other. And the whole what? point of this is how cute these robots look. And? Oh, for sure. They are cute. And they are chunky, for sure. Chunky. I, it's, it's fun. Like, I played this with my kids, and they were really excited about it. Even just picking out the robots. Yeah. yeah. They're durable. It's a pretty easy game to teach, so I will attempt it. The goal of this game is to get points, and you're doing that by smashing up the other robots. Each player is going to choose. There's a robot. Four of them come in the base game, although you can buy packs with more of them. When you get a robot, you're going to get a board. So let's say I'm playing the cute pug over here. You're going to put one blue cube on that board, and then you'll fill the rest of your wrenches with red cubes. This is your hit points, and mo for most robots, it is going to be a total of five, although there is at least one robot in the base game, Crate, who has more than that. Players are also going to get a starting deck of cards that are going to include a lot of batteries, um, a hammer, and a jump jet. You're going to shuffle this deck. You're going to draw five cards. On your turn, you can play the cards from your hand in any order and do various things. Now, at the beginning of your turn, if you're on one of these spots, something might happen to you. This gives you an extra energy. This can heal you. Different things. And you can set the terrain in this game up any way you want. This is kind of the starting setup. If you're in this middle gray area, you get a victory point. And you just take one of these cubes and put it next to your board as a victory point. Then you'll play the cards from your hand in any order. Now, some things like this plus two move. So you get two movement on the board. And movement just going to be to adjacent places. This lets you move over obstacles. You could even jump over another robot. When you use movement and you're next to another robot, you can spend two movement to push them. You might want to push them into thumbtacks where they'll take two damage or push them into a wall or even another robot. In this game, whenever you damage another robot, they you, you will take hit points off equal to the damage you've done to them and keep them in front of you as victory points. If you take the blue one, that robot's removed from the board. They'll respawn at the beginning of their turn, and these are worth two victory points at the end of the game. At the beginning of your turn, if you're dead, you'll respawn with one of these blue cubes and fill it up here. When all these blue cubes are gone and it's time for you to respawn, that triggers the end of the game. When you respawn, you can start in any of these plus signs, these spawning spots on the board. So that's movement. Batteries give you energy. Energy can be used for movement or, in a more fun way, can be used to buy cards. When you buy cards, the cost is up here. There are always advanced batteries, heavy hammers, and rivet guns. These three piles are here. And then there's a whole deck of other cards that are going to be placed out here. So advanced batteries just give you more energy here. Then there's weapons. These are weapons. If it shows a boxing glove, that means you need to be adjacent to the person. So this says... If I'm next to someone, I hit them for two damage. This one over here, the rivet gun, can be up to two spaces away, and that includes diagonally, and then I do two damage to them. Those are basic weapons, and everyone also starts with one basic hammer in your deck that simply does one damage. But you'll be able to add all kinds of cool things. There are function cards when you play them. They just give you special abilities. This one is three energy, and you can move and push diagonally this turn. Five energy, whenever you acquire a card this turn, you can scrap a card in your hand or discard pile. Here's a better battery, that's five energy. And then all kinds of weapons, an acid blaster, crushing jaws, a grappling clamp. And then whenever you buy a card, they're replaced with boomerangs, electrified plating, pneumatic pistons, crushing jaws, optimized ground pound, overclock. If you buy the robot packs, other kinds of cards will come into play like defense cards and upgrade cards that will make your robot better. Once you've played all the cards from your hand, you'll discard everything, and anything you've bought gets discarded. You draw back up to five cards. If your deck runs out, you'll draw, you shuffle your discard pile, and you just keep playing. And that's it. You're just moving around the robot arena, shooting each other, getting energy. Robots have special abilities, like Strider here gets a free attack, well, not a free attack. They have to pay two energy for it. While Petri here, whenever they knock out an enemy robot, you get an extra point and draw a card. They're very aggressive. 
crate has more hit points than everyone else, and it costs an extra move to push crate around. That's the game. Okay, so this game is, oh my word. Um, there's a lot of easy games out mm -hmm. there, but this one is just, hey, play stuff and move around and shoot each other. The only rules that you run into is the pushing people. Right. You gotta remember right. it's two movement, and also no one can ever remember what the stuff, what those um, tiles do. I wish the tiles had a little iconography on them, maybe. Yeah, why yeah. did they put like, like, they put uh, just like a little card on, on the one, bottom of them. or a little lightning bolt on the other? I wouldn't have had to look in the rule book, but now, I, I kept being like, when my kids would land on them, I'd be like, what does that one do at the start of your turn? I know it does something. I remember you know? the healing one. The healing one, and then there's the scrapyard one, but... Right, which I didn't, we need as much. And you don't use them much because you, you tend to avoid them because some are good, some are bad. It's just... Well, they're mostly good. Mostly good except for the tax in the middle. The tax. Don't step on that one, Joey. I do like the tax. Actually, I, I set the board up now with tax in the middle and the hole in the middle because I want the middle to be more dangerous. Yeah. Um, the hole, when you fall into that, it costs an extra... It gives you a damage, and it costs an extra movement to get out. Oh, right. nice. So... But really, all the weapons are silly weapons. They're fun. Mm -hmm. My favorite weapon by far is the Tesla coil. Because mm, that so one lets good. you pay energy. To do extra damage. To do extra damage. Mm. And you can do like 10. But here's the thing. You get blown up. You don't, in this game, being killed, and this is why I think it's such a good game for families. Right. Yep. Doesn't hurt you that much. The worst it will do is it will take away a point that you had from being in the middle. Right. Mm -hmm. And or just put you in a location you didn't want to be. But me killing Roy, I take right. points off of his hit points, but he doesn't lose anything. Right. Yeah, when, when I played, I'm um, somebody, I'm not going to say anybody, <coughs> Ruthie, was talking all my kids into uh, attacking me constantly and killing me over and over again. But in this game, it wasn't that big of a deal. It's more about focusing on, like, oh, who has their last hit point? How can I line myself up to, like, do two damage here, take out you, do one damage here, take out you? You know, it's kind of interesting, that, like, tactical movement in the game. But also, it's just fun being able to collect new cards and build up that deck. And it kind of reminded me of, in that way, like, Arcadia Quest, how it's not game-ending when you die and you right. just respawn, and had that kind of feel for me. And it was different going to this table, I assume it was me programming, and it's totally not. It's, mm. But it's also, like you said, one of those light games that you read the instructions once and you're like am I missing something and you you're reading really again like nope that's what it is but it's effective it works I, how, and I love little minis too how much did you guys do building up versus just beating people up that's the biggest thing for me you're building up at first and then you have that one guy who just starts it and at that point it's just you know all the bets are off so mm. I think the first game I tend to start building up but then I lost and I realized you just got to go at it and build up as you go give me a couple good weapons well, I'm happy it. Tesla coil I'm telling you I you can waste cards on making that powerful, but if they have like three hit points, I'll go and do twelve. And they're like, "But I'm like, I only have three. I'm like, that's okay." <laughs> that's that's one of the interesting things I felt about this game yeah. is that like if you get a few good weapons, there's half it where they're cycling through your deck constantly, and like you can attack every turn. It's like okay, yep. move, 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 attack, <clears throat> move, 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 attack every turn. And, like and you're just getting points, raking them in. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. Like I did a lot of like just just attacking constantly, and my son did a lot of trying to build stuff up, and he built up a little bit too much to where it's like, oh, well, he's so far behind in points, he wasn't able to necessarily catch up, but it's still fun, because he was having fun playing all the cool cards, and he had way cooler deck than we did. Yeah. The two, so there's multiple robots you can get. I only got two. I got the one that adds the defense and the upgrades. The upgrades mm. are awesome. The upgrades yep. are really they cool. They just add things, and the the defense does stop the big weapons. That's they're cool. a good. They're a good thing. If you get a good defensive card, you put it there, it gives mm -hmm. you a special ability. Someone blows it up. You're like, fine, I bring it back. But it stops you from dying more often, and it doesn't get points. Well, it gives, a few, it gives points to the person hitting it. But I love these packs. Yeah. This is the I way expansions it. are. You buy a pack, put the robot in, throw some cards in the deck. And the cards are not complicated. I mean, mm -hmm. upgrades really are simple. really easy. Defense is slightly more complicated, but not that much. No, and defense adds a lot because then you start watching. If somebody has a lot of defense, somebody wears down that armor, then you're like, you know what, I'm going after them next time. Yeah. This is this is an interesting game where, because normally, like I asked Tom, I was like, do you think my kids could play this? It has 12 plus on the box. My son is 10, yeah. my daughter's 8, and I don't want to gauge that by any other kid's age because my kids have played games their entire lives. But like, they got into this really easily. It's really super simple. It is. And that might turn some people off, right? You're, mm. like, looking for a more tactical game. But I'm really in the mood these days sometimes just to blow people up. And yeah. this one gives me that, and I can be like, ha-ha, I blew up your robot. And you don't even feel that bad when your robot gets blown up. I agree. And even the kill stealing, what I mean, in this game, the final cube is two points. Yes. Right? Okay, that's mm. good. You want to hit someone's final cube. 
but it's not game ending if you don't. Right. It's two points as opposed to one. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of my favorite games I played this year so far, just in terms of sheer joy. Yeah. I yes. haven't played this with my kids yet because we've been playing other games, but I know they'll like it because, mm -hmm. or did I play? I don't remember. But I know that they would they would gang up on dad, blow people up. Yeah. And at Dice Tower East, I played this a lot. It was just so much fun. It was just mm -hmm. easy to get into with people. Yep. I can teach this in minutes. It really reminds me of early Star Realms. Yeah. Had that same feel. Yes, it does. And the Chunky Robot's big selling point to it. I think we're going to still be talking about this one in a year. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. And the fact that they come painted, they come and they just look good out of the box. That's oh, a for huge sure. thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's painted or injected or, yeah, plastic. Yeah, I think inject molded or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, they look good. What would you rate it? Um, honestly, I'd give it a... I'm actually coming in a little higher. I thought it would have been an eight for this one just because I really like it. And not just for families because at Dice Tower East, I played it with adults. And with kids, it's just as good, too. So it plays on both. I mean, that, I can see that going up, but it is light. Mm. So I, I keep it at eight because it is light. But it is one of those that, because it's light, you can play it once and then twice and three times, and you'll find yourself keep coming back to it. I love it. I'm giving it an 8.5. Mm. Um, and just what Joey said, I can play with anybody. Right. Adults, kids, doesn't matter. And... It's fast. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. It says 30 to 60 minutes in a box. It's probably 45 with yeah. four mm -hmm. players. That's almost all my games have been four players. And I don't even know if I would want to play with less. I, mean, I play with three, but not with two. I think you want to have multiple targets, a target-rich mm -hmm. environment right. and, and the thing. Right. But, man, and then just, like I said, the plug and play of the expansions, I'm excited to try more robots out and more stuff. So, for me, 8.5. So for me, I read through the rules, learned how to play this game, and then uh, I realized, oh, the amount of times you die is is when the game ends. So I was like, oh, this is our first game. I'm playing with my kids. I'm going to make it put a less of those things out there so the game's a little bit shorter. We were getting towards Five the end of that. Five minutes later. I know. We're getting to the end of that, and my kids are like, we want to keep playing. I was like, well, technically, we're supposed to have these mini blue cubes. I'm giving this 8.5. I thought it was a blast. My kids wanted to keep playing it. My girlfriend wanted to keep playing it. We had so much fun playing it. And I just feel like it's a game that will be just good with families that don't like aren't afraid to just get in there and just beat each other up. It's just a lot of fun to like have those combinations. So I think it's a blast, 8.5. Yep. Yeah, to take that game. That doesn't feel mean, you know, at the same right. way. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like a pillow fight. Right. I think would yeah, be yeah. the best way to put yep, it. So. I agree. That's Robot Quest Arena. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kennedy. I'm Joy Evans. He's also R2-D2. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep.